This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. We had a membership class on Friday night, which was tremendous. We had a tremendous time. Uh, some three, four families, I think, came. New families came to the membership, and we're going to be doing, uh, praying for those in, uh, in August and uh, welcome them into uh, fellowship here at Woodenshaw Community Church. So that's good, isn't it? Hallelujah. How are you, Daniela? It's nice to see you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, so Amy and Silas was one of those families, and Micah and the little guy, Mary, and Micah and Mary, and Sam and Miriam, and uh, who else did we? Gideon we had, and the sisters. Is Elizabeth? Elizabeth we had as well. Families... Um, represented for the membership, plus we also had Akin, was it Akin? Where is he? Oh, he's over there. Over there. If you've not been to a membership, a membership, you need to come to a membership class. You need to know what you're a part of and what we're doing and what's going on and what's happening. And, you know, I talked to Akin, I said, how long have you been here? He said, two and a half year. <laughs> I said, have you ever been to a membership class? He said, no. But I think you, you knew, uh, uh, you know, we have been through different things with him explained, you know, wh- who we are and what we're doing and stuff like that as well. And some of you, I actually invited you personally and never even got back to me. Holly, I think that's rude. I think that's very, very rude. When someone invites you personally and, and you don't even bother just to pick up the... T- and I know you can text because I see you sometimes texting in the service. <laughs> But you'd be, don't be texting, you'd be just taking notes, I know that as well. But God is so good to you and I, isn't he? God is so good to you and I. And I was just thinking about, the, you know, we've been, been going some, through some tremendous trials and different things in our own lives, our own personal lives. Uh, there's nothing wrong with our marriage, amen. We've been 40 odd years together. But with my mum and stuff like that, my mum is 92 years old and, you know, they diagnosed uh, diagnosed her with Alzheimer's and different things. We've just been walking over the last, you know, six months or so to try and, you know, get some care and help her and stuff like that. And on Friday, I think it was Friday, we had a birthday. She's 92 on the 28th of August, but we had a birthday the week before and uh, because a lot of the family could be there. And then the last week, Friday morning was our birthday, and I woke up Friday morning and, you know, I, I was so depressed, and I was so, oh, man, uh, I just, ha- uh, that devil was having a field day. He just had a great time with me. I felt a loss all me, peace. I felt everything just drain away. And a lot of times that's what happens to us because we don't really experience the true peace of God and draw on his peace. And that's what I'm going to be speaking about this morning. But I just want to share this with you. And then I just said to Mary, I said, Mary, it's my mum's 92nd birthday today. I said, and what we're going to give her, we're going to put her in a home. And she left the house. I don't want you to feel sad. That's not what I'm telling you this story for. She left the house on that Friday half trail, came back from the camp and stuff like that, raced back in, after being stuck in two hours of traffic to get to her before she was taken into the home. And she's in there for assessment and different things that they do or whatever. So, but It was a, a, a real hard time. It was a real, real hard time. And I just began to, you know, call upon the Lord. And, you know, when you go through things like that, it's only God that you can call on because he's our peace. Can you say amen? And I began to think about my mum. And then, you know, that, that day, all that day, all that Friday, I was with Joseph and a few of the guys. And all my whole mind was on my mum, you know, in this home with a load of strangers and, you know, sitting there. And, yeah, oh, man, it was, it was heartbreaking. And then... The next day, the Saturday, I was doing my sermon for some... Well, I had been doing the sermon, but uh, uh, I had been doing the sermon, and God began to speak to me about peace, about His peace. And I just felt this wave of God's peace. Just, I just experienced this wave of God's peace. And every single thing that I felt on the Friday, I could just feel it floating away. Do you ever see, do you ever see uh, if it's films, some of you have seen films, and you see something of the demoniac or the, uh, uh, the phenomenal, and you see a black cloud just lifting. Do you ever see that, you know, in a film? And that's exactly how I felt. I felt this weight, and I felt all of this thing lift. 
and God began to show me of the benefits of what's happening and what's taking place with my mother. And he's with her all the time and he never leaves her and never forsakes her. He's always there. If she wakes up at 6 o'clock, he's there. If she wakes up at 7 o'clock, he's there. No matter what time, because my mum has a really good relationship with the Lord. She knows the Lord. And... You know, that really just brought a real peace to my heart. It brought, a, you know, a contentment. You know, when the Apostle Paul says, I've learned to be content in all circumstances. And that's what actually happened to me. I learned to, you know, that peace of God. I began to listen to God and I began to draw upon that peace. And I many know when you draw upon the peace of God, turmoil goes and all of the upset and the waves of despair, they all just float away. And God's peace just... You can just feel God's peace in your heart and in your spirit. But you can only experience that if you know Jesus. Because the Bible says that we're temples, our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. So if you and I are temples of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in you and lives in me, the Holy Spirit has certain characteristics. First of all, we know that the Holy Spirit is God. When we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about God. When we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about God. When we're talking about God the Father, we're, we're speaking about God. We're speaking about the, tri the Trinity. We're speaking about a triune being that has different expressions, but they're still all one. You know, some of us have, you know, uh, 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 illustrated by, you know, ice, water, and what's the other thing? Steam, you know, it's all, there's three, but they're all one. Just give you an idea, or an egg or something like that. It's three sort of parts, but it's still just an egg. And it just gives us a, a picture of who the Holy Spirit is. But you need to experience the Holy Spirit, and you need to get to know the Holy Spirit. God demonstrating His love through His Holy Spirit, because that's the, the, the dispensation that you and I are in today. We're not in the dispensation of God the Father. We're not in the dispensation of the Lord Jesus. We're in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was going away, he said, I've got to go. It's imperative that I go. He said, because I need to send someone. I need to send a comforter. One like me, he'll be the same as me, but he'll be with you always. He'll always be there. He'll be in you. He'll abide in you. He'll live in you. Your, your, your body will become his temple, and he will actually reside. He will actually dwell inside you and I. That's where he is right now. He's inside you and I. And we can draw upon all his attributes. We talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit. We speak about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we don't even understand what we're saying. We don't really understand what we're saying. We don't really understand that that divine nature is given to you and I. We have every single part of God you dwelling within our, our body, within our spirits. Our bodies become a temple of the Holy Spirit, and God's nature is in you and I. All His attributes, we can draw upon His giftings. That's why we can pray for people that are sick. That's why we can pray and believe God for a creative miracle. Creative miracles work through you and I. God's giftings work through you and I. When we step out and realize that this power is not of ourselves, but it's a power of God. It's a supernatural power. I know Pastor uh, 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 Jane was speaking last week, and I understood where he was, was going about the joy. And I understood the, the joy, and he was talking about where we have a natural joy. We do have a natural joy also, but we also have a, a, a joy that supersedes a natural joy. And we've got a peace this morning that supersedes a natural peace that you and I, I have. You know, we have a tremendous peace. And this peace comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the segments of the Holy Spirit. And He wants every single one of us in this place this morning to know God. We can only know God through the power of the Holy Spirit. As He begins to lead us, as He begins to teach us and begins to comfort us and begins to show us in His Word, He shows us the Father. He shows us, He illuminates the Father to you and I. He illuminates the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't work on His own behalf. And He illuminates... God to you and I. He illuminates the giftings that you and I can have to accomplish that what Jesus has left us to do. 
But a lot of times, because you and I don't exercise or manifest or draw upon the fruits or the giftings of the Holy Spirit, a lot of times we, you know, we act in our own strength, in our own authority and in our own power. And then we wonder why nothing is happening and nothing is taking place. Because the devil tells us, you know, you'll never be good enough. That's not for you. That's, all, that's only for people that are spiritual and people that are holy and people that are, you know. This. No, that is for believers. That is for believers. These signs will follow those who believe, the Bible says. These signs will follow those who believe. You don't need to call me, Dave, at 3 o'clock in the morning to come and pray for your dog. You don't need me to come up to uh, phone me and come at three o'clock to pray for your wife or your husband or whatever. You don't need me. I will come. But you don't really need me because these signs will follow those who believe. You and I are believers this morning. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick. And the Bible says they, they get well. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. This is for you and I. This is for the believer. This is the giftings manifested in you and I when we see people healed after laying hands on them. This is what we should be expecting. We should be expecting them to be healed. We should be expecting them, you know, expecting them to re receive that miracle if a miracle is needed. Because you and I are conduits for the Holy Spirit. We're the flown, we're, 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 uh, 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 you know, the Holy Spirit flows through in you and I and accomplishes what He accomplishes. That's why you and I can't, you and I can't, exp you and I can't get any glory from that. We can't think, hey, I'm not doing, a, well, I'm not doing an amazing job. I'm not doing a great, and we do like encouragement, and we are doing an amazing job, and you're doing an amazing job, and God tells us we're doing an amazing job, but that's not why we do it. Can you say amen? We do it because of obedience to Him, because He's walking in us. He is a walk in you and I if we'll allow Him. Do you remember me speaking last week about being the light of the world? Jesus said to you're the light of the world. He was saying you're the you're the, you're, you're the same you're, you're an illumination you're the same you're the same as as Jesus in this world and Jesus said my will is to do the do do, do do the will of Him who sent me not to do my own work we're not here you know filling our own agendas and thinking to us hey you know you know we're, we're we're doing His work we're about our Father's business can you say Amen. It's an important business that God has entrusted you and I with, empowered you and I with, authorized you and I to do, and to go and do it. That's all we're short sure of doing. But all we want to do is come. <laughs> all we want to do many times is come and sit down and, you know, pray and fast and all that. And then things are good. We need all those things. Listen to what I'm saying. But we also need to go. And we also need to be a light. The atmosphere. Do you remember me talking about the atmosphere of the darkness? As soon as you and I go in, we're going in with the full power, the full authority, the full anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, the illumination of the Spirit of God. That light changes the whole atmosphere everywhere you and I go. If you go into a supermarket, the, the atmosphere changes because of the power of Almighty God in you and I. And we've got to learn. We've got to learn. We can only learn that by knowing God. And when we know God and fellowship and, and, and have that relationship with God, that becomes like a, 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 a natural, supernatural thing to us when we go into a place. There's no fear. We know that God is at work. We know no matter what the situation or the circumstance that we have the answer for it. If we're in the restaurant and the waiter comes up, how many know that waiter needs to know Jesus? We're all a lot of us thinking many times it's, it's just, we've not gone there to witness tonight, Helen. We're having a night off. Well, you know, we're having a meal. We're having a curry. You know, we're, we're, I'm off tonight. Saturday night, I don't walk Saturday night, Jesus. I don't tell anyone. I don't experience you Saturday night. I'll do that Sunday morning. You know when I come to church on Sunday morning? And many, many times that's the way we operate because we don't understand the power that we're carrying. We don't understand the voltage, the, the, the voltage of that power. That's not just 240 volts. Can you say amen? That's enough power to blow a mountain into the sea. And Jesus said that. He said, if you say it, you speak to this mountain. 
And you speak to it. He said, that mountain will be cast straight into the sea. No matter what it is. I remember we were in a restaurant one Saturday. It could have been a Saturday night or whatever. And uh, this waiter come around he served. And, you know, you are interested in the meal, Fabian. You know, I do like Indian food. And I like to cook properly. And I like the nice spice and, you know, whatever. And he come up and served us. And, you know, we knew this lad that was coming and serving us. And he was just, he started complaining. Do you remember, Mary? He started complaining. He said, his back, he, he said, I have a really bad back. He said, my back's been killing me all day. Really, really painful. Oh, I said, oh, that's terrible. That's a, that, you know, I hope you, you know, I hope you get, so I'm just sitting, I just want my meal. I'm not thinking about the power of healing that I carry around within me. I'm not thinking about the peace and all of the things of the joy of the Holy Spirit. I'm just thinking of the curry. You know, I'm just hoping Mary will pay for it. <laughs> and Mary says to me, why don't you pray for him? Didn't you? You remember Mary? Why don't you pray for Why don't you pray for the waiter? That can be a bit embarrassing, can't it? Because, you, you, you know, you're sort of trying to get it off the ground and you think, because you're relying on yourself. You're thinking, this is me. This is me that's doing it. What if it doesn't work? What if he's a Muslim? Or what if he says, you know, I don't believe in any of that stuff. But isn't it amazing when people are in a need? It doesn't matter what, <laughs> what the need is, what nationality are, they are, what religion they are, they start calling out to God. I've seen uh, atheists, 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 isn't it? Atheists and agnostics and, you know, I've seen them on their deathbed. Never believing in God all their life, but as soon as they're there, there's just eternities in their hearts because God put eternity in every single person's heart. And every single person you know knows there's a God. Really deep down they know there's a God. And God begins to reveal himself. And we've seen some people saved on their deathbed. We've seen some people also still reject the Lord Jesus on their deathbed. But what I was, I was saying that to say this, the way I was there, and he's, you know, in agony, and I'm just thinking about the food. I'm not saying that to make you feel bad, but I felt bad because I didn't want to pray for the guy because there, there was a lot of other people in the restaurant and stuff like, you know, and I'm thinking, well, what if it doesn't work? So anyway, in the end, you know, Mary, she, and sometimes your wife is, you know, she starts insisting I pray, <laughs> pray for the guy. So anyway, I talk to him and said to him, would you like me to pray for you? And I'm thinking, you know, he'll think, yeah, I want you to pray for me, you know, tomorrow or next week. In, you know, in that when you say to someone, oh, oh, let me pray for you, I want to pray for you. And they go, yeah, that's really nice. But this guy straight away, because I knew it was God was walking on him, I'm walking on me as well. And straight away, this guy gets prepared, puts the tray down, and he's getting ready for me to pray for him. He knew that I should be praying for him then, not waiting until tomorrow or next week. And then, of course, you see, you, you get bold then, don't you? Because you notice that when you step out, you notice you step out of your own body and you know you're walking in the supernatural and you can sense the presence, the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you don't, but you've still got to move in faith anyway. So I began to move in faith. I began to pray for this guy and laid hands on him and began to pray. And you know the guy got totally healed, didn't he, Mary? Got totally healed and he was running around. He couldn't do enough for, for me. Now, I didn't tell him that was his tip as well. <laughs> no, we gave, him a, we gave him a tip also. But, you know, this morning, you know, God wants to give you and I his peace. He wants you and I to draw upon what's already in our spirits. See, one time your spirit and my spirit were dead in trespasses and sins. That's what the Bible says. It was black. It was dark. There was a darkness there. But the Bible says as soon as you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we were born again. The atmosphere changed. God's Spirit brought our spirit to life, connected with our spirit. And now our spirit is alive. Our spirit is exactly the same as Jesus Christ. That's how we can worship God. We can only worship God in spirit and in truth. You, you know that, don't you? You know, we can't do it by feeling or, or anything like that. We do it in spirit and in truth. It's spirit. It's spirit to spirit, not flesh. The Bible says flesh and blood will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So it's our spirit. As you and I begin to uh, uh, release our spirit, release those things that are in our spirit. And our spirit, our spirit houses God. Our spirit houses the, the fruits of God's spirit. Our, 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 our spirit 
uh, houses the gifts of God's Spirit. So if I'm in a situation and I need a miracle in that situation, I'm not going to wait on somebody else. I'm going to draw on that Spirit and I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, you know what I need in this situation. I need a word of wisdom for Helena. I need a, I, I need a miracle in this area or whatever. And, and, and you'll find that as you draw upon them and step out in faith, and God will give you those things. As you begin to pray for somebody, and you ask God, Lord, give me a word for the person. Give me a word from your spirit to bring peace into this situation, to bring a peace that passes all understanding, not a peace as the world gives. How many know the world gives us, give, can give a peace? But it's not this peace I'm talking about this morning. This peace, like the love Pastor Ross spoke about the other week, which was tremendous, and Pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Berry preached on, on last week uh, uh, on joy, and then me this morning sp uh, speaking on the Holy Ghost. We are speaking about the supernatural presence of God changing an atmosphere, helping people to receive His love, to receive His joy, and to receive His peace. See, it's already there. It's already in there, but we need to experience it. I've heard people t tell me, you know, I have, a, I have a terrible temper. I'm always shouting at the wife. I'm always shouting at the kids. I have a terrible temper. I can't, I can't, I'm talking about Christians. I can't control my temper. I've got this anger that rages in me all the time. I'm try, I'm tr no, this is an illustration. This is not really me. I'm not saying I've got all the, you know... Did you think, yeah, okay, maybe let's get a new pastor. <laughs> and we think, you know, and we're praying and we're fasting and we're doing all these things to change this thing called anger, called temper, called whatever it is. We're calling upon God and we're crying out and we're fasting because we've struggled with this for years. And we've then, you know, it's not enough for us to pray and fast. We, we phone every Tom, Dick and Harry and we want them to pray and fast as well. And then we're all praying and we're all fasting. And the situation doesn't seem to change. It changes for a while. But then something happens again. And that thing, right, who knows what I'm talking about this morning? That thing comes up again and we feel so guilty and we feel so bad and we, we condemn ourselves all over again. I can't get this self-control. I can't get this thing under, under control. I can't control it. And then what happens? Eventually we give, we give up. We think, well, that's the way I am, God. You're going to have to take me with this and, and that's it. And, I'm gonna, and we live our lives like that, up and down, in and out, hot and cold. You know, temper, tantrums and... All of these kind of things. And God says, if only you would realize what you've already got in your spirit. If only you would realize that you have self-control. The fruit of self-control. I think that's another message. But you have the fruit of self-control to deal with that. To deal with that anger. Yeah? Yeah? It's already there. You can deal with it. You are asking people to fast and pray. And there's nothing wrong with fasting and praying. Hear what I'm saying. But if you're not going to step out in faith and start doing something about that, I want to tell you, all the prayer and all the fasting is not going to change that. The thing that's, you, that's going to change that is your knowledge of God. The thing that's going to change that is you renewing your mind and start Thinking and speaking the way God about yourself the way God does. And that temper, the temper doesn't go. How many know the, 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 the temper doesn't go? Let me just do this again. There we go. The temper doesn't go because we always got a temper. The anger, how many know there's nothing wrong with anger? Where does anger come from? Where does anger come from? That's a question. It's a question that, that you know, you, you could answer that. Where do you think anger comes from? Does it come from the devil? Is it, is it, is it from God? Is it just, you know, what is it? What, what is this anger? It's part of you. When God made you, he made you with anger. It's an emotion that you and I have. And there's absolutely nothing wrong. I was talking to some of the guys the other week. There's actually nothing wrong with having anger. 
absolutely nothing wrong with anger. We're talking about controlling me anger and all of this kind of thing. If you know ang what anger really is given to you for, you'd want to stir up that anger and have more anger, and you wouldn't let the sun go down on that anger. You'd continue with that anger. And knowing that anger can bring a peace to your heart and a peace to your soul. Because if you check upon Jesus, you know, we, I many want to be like Jesus. We're like Jesus. We have the mind of Christ. That's what we're like. Let me get you, take you somewhere with this. What we have the mind of Christ. Jesus Christ was angry. He went into the synagogue. You know, he didn't say, you know, look, lads, you know, we'll we have to start out these Hey, You know, you can't start doing this anymore here because, you know. No, he took a whip and he started whipping those guys and he got the tables. He torn them up and he got all of that stuff and he threw it out into the, the hallway to the porch or whatever. And he threw it all out. He was angry. He had a righteous anger. There's a righteous anger. You and I have a righteous anger. We don't control a righteous anger. We stir up a righteous anger. Because a righteous anger is a hatred against everything that hinders God. It's a hatred of the things that God hates. You look how many times in the Bible that God says he hates, he hates, he hates, he hates. And it's all about sin and unrighteousness and all of those things. And you and I need to hate those things that God hates. He said not to let the sun go down on your anger. What he's saying is keep this anger alive. Keep this anger stirred up. This righteous anger, you know, when the devil comes against you and tries to destroy your peace and take away all your, you know, the, the fruits of the Spirit that God, has, that God has put in your spirit, and he starts trying to take away these and starts lying to you and trying to condemn you and trying to bring you down, you and I need to rise up with this anger and say, devil... You've come this far in my family. You've come this far in my life. You've come this far in my situation and in my church, but no for and never again. From today on, I know what you're up to. I know what you're trying to do. I know that you're trying to get me to look at myself in the flesh. And like Fabian said this morning, when God is looking at you and I, he no more sees the things we've done. All he sees is the blood of his crucified son. And that's the way you and I need to start see, seeing ourselves. We need to see ourselves that way because that's what brings us peace. But I remember my mum going into that home. You know, like I said to you before, my heart was broken. Because I was looking at things, I think, you know, I'm never going to see my mum now in her house anymore. And she's never going to come past that doorway. And, you know, the little things she does and opens the window and waves out the blinds to me. And, you know, when I lock the door, she locks it on the inside and I tap the window and she taps it. And I'm, I'm in this, I'm in this, uh, this place. It, like, like that fellow, you know, the, uh, he was in the, 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 the Pilgrim's Progress <laughs> <laughs> he was in the despondency, he was in the, you know, he was in that, that place, in that dark place. And I began to think of all these things, but my peace began to dwindle because I began to look at the circumstance and I began to see all of the things that was not really affecting me, but the things that was affecting me. And it was more like a selfish, you know, it's more like a And then it was like the next day when God lifted that cloud off and God began to show me when your mother is in that place and they're... She's with people all day. She'll never be on her own again. Plus, I'm with her all the time. She'll never be on her own again. People will be visiting her. People will be feeding her. People will be looking after her. No more will you be thinking, you know, she's going to open the door for somebody and someone's going to push in and, and take her, her purse or take her belongings. No more will you be thinking, you know, that she'll open the door and go down to the shops and, you know, wander about and maybe get, you know, knocked down or maybe wander somewhere and, you know, you never see her again or whatever. All them things were in my mind every single day. She'll get up in the morning. Maybe she'll come down the stairs and she'll make a cup of tea and she'll call herself at the kettle. Maybe she'll just be bringing it in and she'll be getting medication or whatever and take too much medication or whatever. That they, there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. And I was beginning to focus on all of that and never focusing on the healing power of Jesus that I had carrying me, never focusing on the peace of God that I have, never focusing on all of those other things. And then it was like God lifting that blanket, lifting that blackness, lifting that darkness. And the peace of God 
just came upon me. And I have that peace now. I have that peace today. And that's what I'm sharing with you. You too can rise up. You know, you've got situations. You've got problems today. You've got different things going on with some of the things I've spoken about. You don't have to stay there because this morning you're a child of God. The Bible says, little children, even if you sin, he said, we have an advocate with the Father. I've made, I've made, you know, uh, I've made uh, uh, arrangements, you know, if, if, if you fail, if you let me down, you don't have to stay there. I've got a Holy Spirit who can live in you, who you can walk after. You can walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. He'll help you. He'll guide you. He'll bring you back all things to remembrance. He will show you my goodness. And that's why I'm just this morning, I'm saying to you, you know, you need to, we have to learn about the Holy Spirit. We have to learn about God. We have to, you know, Fabian was saying, you know, about reading the Word, you know, about singing the songs and stuff. And some of us were good at singing songs. Some of us, we'd rather do all of this and keep doing and doing and doing and doing and doing for God rather than sometimes sitting down and just being with God. You know, we're doing this. I'm doing it for you, Lord. And we sometimes, and I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> You know, I've got to do this. There's no time now. No, 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 no time now. No, no. I've no t- and we're doing all sorts of things for God instead of sitting in God's presence. You know, like uh, uh, Andrew had them this morning. And he was sitting in God's presence and just praying and just talking to God and then allowing God to speak to them. And then they would share that out what God was speaking. See, a lot of times you and I are praying and in the presence of God. And we're deaf, you know, we, we've got one eye on God and one eye on the clock. You know, and there's no peace. You know, we've done our religious duty and everything else. And we get up from that thing, quiet time, devotional, whatever you want to call it. You know, I don't have devotionals now for an hour. I don't pray for an hour now. I just pray every day. I just be with God every day. Same as when I'm with my wife. I don't spend just an hour with her and tell her how much, how great she is and how good she is and all the things she does. And then I'm finished for 23 hours and then I just do it. No, it's a, it's a, a daily walk with God. That's why Jesus said, you know, you need to pray without ceasing. Stay in communication with me on the 24-7. And, you know, if you seek me with all of you, he says, you'll find me. I'm there. And we've got to learn that. We've got to learn to rest in his presence. We've got to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to walk in us as we begin to sit in his presence. As the peace of God, the atmosphere changes in our heart and in our lives and in our spirit. And we sense the presence of Almighty God. And we begin to meditate on his word. And we begin to say, I think Pastor Andrew, uh, Andrew this morning was talking about um, Psalm chapter 1. About not seating it, sitting in the seat of the scoffle and all that. Because that affects you. All the things that affects us, doesn't it? You know, and God has said, hey, don't let those things affect you. I'm trying to build this relationship with you. You know, the most important thing in your life is building a relationship with God. It's not doing what God has called you to do. It's not being all, all this. It's building a relationship with God. Everything else will flow out of our obedience to God. If you and I know God, nobody would have to tell us how to tithe. Nobody would have to tell us to come to church on time. If you and I truly knew who we worship, the Holy Spirit would lead us. The Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's, those who are born again, those who accepted Christ as their Savior, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. How have we done that? How have we crucified the flesh and its passions and desires? How have we done that? If you're Christ, the Bible says, that's what you've done. You know, we've not done it in our own strength. It's him that's done it on the cross for you and I. He's done it on the cross for you and I. He crucified our flesh. Our flesh died on the cross. Our passions, our desires. The Bible says if we live in the Spirit, Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another, provoking one another, and envying one another. See, we're talking about peace this morning. But people think peace 
is absence of war. People think peace is, is, uh, is something they feel. It's something I feel. You know, if there's nothing going on, you ever, you ever get to a time that everything is going great? Everything, you're getting ready for your holidays or whatever. Everything in the garden is rose. Everything is just blooming. And you feel a great sense of joy and a great sense of love for everybody. And this peace is just flooding your heart. How many's ever been there? That's the way we're supposed to live. According to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. And sometimes we get there, Dave. We, we, you know, we do get there. You know, there's hope this morning. This is not a dead message. This is not a, a, a negative this morning. This is to stir you and I up to help us to get there. But the only way we will ever get there if we know who God is, if we know what we've got. There's a great verse of Scripture, and I've got a, I, you know, I haven't even preached my message this morning here. I just preached what God has put on my heart. Because let me tell you something, Terence, let me tell you something. Everyone in this world, I don't care what religion they are. I don't care what color they are. I don't care where they're situated. Every single person in this whole world wants peace. They want peace. They want peace. And you know it says that in, from the year 1496 B.C. to A.D. 1861. Listen to this. There's 3,358 years. In 3,358 3, years, there were 227 years of peace. In other words, there was uh, uh, 13 years of war for every one year of peace. From, the, that, from that time it says that there was more than 8,000 treaties of peace to remain in force. But none of them, uh, sorry, uh, uh, 8,000 treaties of peace were signed uh, to remain in force for, uh, forever. But it says that the average time they remained in force was two years. See, everyone is crying peace, peace. Jeremiah says, you know, uh, uh, he said the people in his day, he said, they cried peace, peace, when there is no peace. And I want to tell you today, it will never be any different. There will never be peace. You remember Jesus said, I've came to bring peace. Do you remember he said that? But then he said, I've come to uh, bring a, 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 a father against his daughter. Uh, uh, I've come to cause division. And you think, I thought you said you come to bring peace. And you're speaking about all. Oh, see, there will be no peace. There will be no peace on this earth. You and I think, you know, it's getting better. Things are getting better. You know, th things are getting worse. Because the Bible tells us there's wars and rumors of wars. And in the last days, these will be prevalent. And, uh, prevalent and, and, and we'll see all of these kind of things in the last days. But this is not the peace Jesus is thinking. He's not talking about absence of war. He's not thinking about everything smooth and sailing for you and I. He's talking about a peace that the world can't give. That the world can't give. That the world can take away. Philippians 4 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. He's talking out about the the peace of God. It transcends all understanding and that peace will guard your heart and that peace will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. See, we've got the protection of God. We've got the peace of God. So no matter what's happening, no matter who's at war, earthquakes and rumors of war and all of those kind of things, you and I are still at peace. We have got this peace that passes all understanding. A peace not as the world is given, but the peace that Jesus gives. Oh, Oh, the peace my Savior gives. Peace beyond compare. It's Jesus that gives us this peace through the power and the anointing of his Holy Spirit. Philippians 4, 9, he says, whatever you've learned, I love this. There's a great message here God showed me this morning. I haven't got time to preach. Maybe I could just give it to you, Dave. I'll give you the four points of it. And it's a tremendous message. And it's just in Philippians 4, 9. And Paul is speaking to the Philippian church. He loved the Philippian church there. In fact, Paul was a lover, wasn't he? He loved everyone he spoke to, even the women. And some women were very antagonistic. Even today, they're very antagonistic against 
against the Apostle Paul. They think he's a woman hater. But you need to read his beautiful letters to the churches because he wrote most of the New, New Testament. And he wrote them from, a, from a, a contentment. And he wrote them from peace. A peace that passes all understanding. And here he says in the book of uh, Philippians 4, now a couple of verses down, David, he's talking to this church, like I'm talking to you this morning. And he says to them, wherever you have learned. See, this morning you've come into this place. What have you learned? What have you learned to the worship? Those beautiful ladies, they were up there this morning. They were singing their heart out. I seen them before you came in, because some of you come in late. And I seen them before you came in. They were here practicing and just worshiping. And I know you've an excuse for worshiping late, uh, uh, being late. I know all those things, kind of things, because we've been listening to them for years. Hallelujah. But we seen these ladies this morning, and they knew those 30 odd people away. Ras is there enjoying himself, all in the presence of God. All your kids there enjoying the presence and peace of God. And these four ladies or five ladies come up here and they get the thing and they start worship. And I was thinking, the Melango said at the back, I said, All they need to do is just worship God. That's it. You don't need to learn how to sing or learn how to talk. I said, when you just worship God, there's just the presence of God that comes. There's just a peace of God that flows. And his presence is among us because the Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. And the atmosphere begins to change. And God begins to do things like he is right now in your heart and your life. And he says, the things that you have learned. What have you learned this morning from these guys here singing and worshiping and praising God and just loving God? And Fabian here poured his heart into the word and just shared in the gospel and you know taking up the offering and giving you an opportunity of sown into God's wonderful kingdom see you need to all of those things being peace if you know why you're doing it and what you're doing and he said the things that you've learned the things that you've learned that's point number one the things you've learned David are received point number two learned and received what have you received this morning what have you received from me preaching and teaching and ministering under the power of the Holy Spirit today? See, this is not me just sprouting words. This is not me just teaching you something this morning. This is the Spirit of God infusing you with His Word. This Word is making a difference this morning in people's lives. This Word this morning is changing atmosphere. This Word this morning will change people's lives because God is watching over His Word this morning to perform it in our lives. What have you received or what are you receiving this morning? Or heard? Point number three. Point one, learned. Point two, received. Or heard? What have you heard today? Daniela, what have you heard this morning? God has brought you in here this morning from, you know, that foreign country that you're... <laughs> <laughs> she only lives down south. But God has brought her in here this morning, and God wants you to hear something. I want to tell you this morning, Jesus said he has ears. He didn't mean that your ears, that you know, he knew you had ears because he knew some of you hold, wear glasses. And your ears, you use your ears to hold up the glasses. And that's what many of us do. We hold up our glasses with our ears. But Jesus said he who has ears. You missed that, Kaolu, didn't you? Explain that to him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, he who has ears, he who has ears, let him hear. Let him hear what's been said. Let him hear, let him take a hold. Let him hear, let him say, wow, now I hear what you're saying, Lord. Learned, you've received, or heard, or seen. Number four, great message, isn't it, David? Seen. What have you seen this morning? What have you seen this morning in the atmosphere? Maybe you were in the prayer meeting, or maybe you were here in the service, or maybe even now, and you're seeing things. God has shown you something in your spirit. God has shown you the power and the authority that you, you have in your spirit this morning, that you can rise up, and the, the power of the Holy Spirit can use you in a powerful and a tremendous way. That's what a lot of people, that's what I said, Dave. A lot of people want me to come at 3 o'clock in the morning. Right time. You've got the same power as me. Pray for her. Stand in faith. And if it doesn't work, give me a ring about 9 o'clock. 
I remember when I went to the hospital, I'm going to start to bring this to a close, but I want to encourage your faith this morning. I remember when Aloysius and Chi Chi were here. Do you remember, who knows Aloysius and Chi Chi? And Chi Chi was here. I think I told Sam and Miriam about this story. Chi Chi was here, and we know what happened. She had a bed and all the things. I'll, I'll just cut it a little bit short. But she collapsed on the floor in her kitchen, and she died. It's 33 years, 34 years of age, and she got to the hospital, and lots of them performed the things on her, trying to resuscitate her. Apparently, they put these electric things on and shocked her over 118 times with the shockers to try and bring her back. She was in an induced coma in the hospital. I remember uh, the day, and Aloysius phoned me, and he said to me, Pastor Mike, he said, uh, she began to explain to me, the doctors have given her no hope. No, no. I said, well, let me tell you something. You keep hoping. You keep hoping, let's keep believing God for her. And I remember praying, and I remember going to the hospital and saying, Father, I need you. I need you. I need wisdom from you today. I can't do this on my own. I can't say some magic words. I can't just, you know, perform something, you know, because it pleases something. But I need to remember I'm drawn upon your power. I need to remember the Holy Spirit is with me, guiding me. I need to remember that as I lay hands on the sick, something is going to happen. I took the oil with me. I took the, you know, I said, I explained to it. Uh, Aloysius, I said, I'm taking this. This is to help me, Aloysius, to store my faith up. And it, it, it represents the Holy Spirit, the oil. And I said, I'm going to anoint Chi Chi with oil. She's in an induced coma. Could hear nothing of what I was saying or anything like that. And I come over to her. And I said to Aloysius, I said, I'm going to anoint her with oil. I said, I'm going to speak into her ear the word of God. And I'm going to pray over uh, going to pray a prayer of faith over her. I said, I'm going to believe God. And I said, I'm just going to leave it at that. And that's exactly what I've done. I prayed, lay, lay, uh, put the oil on her, lay hands on her, and I came up to her ear, and I talked into her ear, and I said, Chi Chi, this is exactly what I'm going to do. And I started reading from Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. See, all our sicknesses and all our diseases is already upon Jesus. And I talked, I'm not upon this lady, Father. This lady has a right to live. And I began to speak life and cast out the spirit of death. And I began to take authority in the heart. And this was all done very, very quietly. Where eight or ten people were running all over the place doing different things. And this was done very, very quietly. And I just left that hospital and I just left it to God. And two weeks later, I think, glory to God, that lady walked out of that hospital. See, we're talking, about, we're talking about the peace that God gives you. We're talking about the power that you have as well. You've got exactly this power. You could have went up. It wasn't a, a special day, a special Pastor Mike day or anything like that. You could have went up that day yourself, and you could have done exactly the same thing I've done because you carry exactly the same power. You carry exactly the same power that I, that I carry. And the Holy Spirit is in us. But all we need is that Holy Ghost boldness. He gave us the power. These signs will follow those. We, we say all the, 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 but it's true. And this is where you and I can live a life of peace. We're not look, always looking over our shoulder. You know, am I sinning and am I pleasing God? Am I pleasing him or whatever? No, we don't have to look at anybody because we know who we are in Christ. He who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God in him. So I'm the righteousness of God, and that's how we can operate. Sure, we fail in all of the different things that come upon us, but get torn on this morning. Get torn on to the power, torn on to the power of the Holy Spirit and start operating in his power and not in your own, uh, in your own uh, uh, feelings, not in your own negativity or your own inadequacies. Don't operate in those things, but operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to bring a peace to my heart right now. Is that your prayer this morning? Is that your prayer this morning? You carry that peace. You don't have to wait for it to come from heaven. That control I talked about over anger, you don't have to wait and fast and pray and for it to come from heaven. You can draw upon it. It's in your spirit, the spirit of self-control. You can draw upon that this morning. That joy, exactly the same. That joy, exactly the same. You're miserable this morning. You know, start storing up those gifts within you. Start storing up the Holy Spirit within you and begin to draw upon his love, his joy, his peace, his goodness, his long-suffering, his self-control, and all the other things that he's made. We hope you've been inspired and challenged by this message. 
For more information about Withenshaw Community Church Manchester, please visit withenshawcommunitychurch.org.